Welcome to our first uh, virtual public comment session. I am Amanda McAtee and with me is Mark Brainerd. We work for the Division of Research and our analyst for the Joint Legislative Oversight Sunset Committee is JLOSC. We work in the field of program evaluation and are members of the National Legislative Program Evaluation Society. As you may be aware, JLOSC selected seven councils and committees for sunset and oversight review. Public comments are most helpful during a research phase of the review process, which is why we are conducting these virtual comment sessions as part of our research. These sessions are being recorded and can be replayed on the General Assembly's YouTube channel. Recording in progress. We want to take a quick minute to uh, touch on the review process for attendees who may not be familiar. We have a detailed review process overview video in PDF document available on the committee's website. In short, JLOSC is tasked in, with performing periodic legislative review of state entities to determine performance and genuine public needs. As you can see here, there are four steps in the process after JLOSC selects an entity for review. We have research, which is limited in scope to the committee under review. Writing, which will recording be... recording in progress. I'm not sure why the recording in progress keeps uh, playing. Apologies for that. Oops, sorry. Uh, writing, uh, staff who will release a findings and recommendations report in early 2022. The public may access. These reports on JLOSC's website. Committee meetings, there are three types, presentation, recommendation, and holdover. Meetings will resume in January of 2022. And then lastly, implementation, which is where staff monitors the implementation of recommendations, aids in the legislative process, and keeps JLOSC informed. I'm going to turn it over to Mark um, so we can start the comment period. Thanks, Amanda. So today we will start with the registered attendees who signed up to comment. Uh, when your name is called, you will be able to unmute yourself and have two minutes to provide your comment. Uh, for the record, please first state your name and the 2022 review body that you are providing comments on. A slide will pop up on the screen indicating when you have 30 seconds remaining. If time permits, we will open it up to attendees who did not register to comment. If you wish to offer a comment following those who signed up, please utilize the raised hand function in Zoom and you will be added to our list. In fairness to uh, all participants here today, there will be a strict time limit of two minutes per comment. If you are currently watching this through the YouTube live stream, uh, but wish to provide a two minute comment, you must register for the meeting first and enter this Zoom to participate. There is a registration link below uh, your screen in the video's description on YouTube. There is also a flyer with the registration links on the committee's website. This is the first of two virtual public comment sessions. The second opportunity to participate will be tomorrow. Uh, that's Wednesday, October 27th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Written comments are always accepted by either emailing them directly to sunset at Delaware.gov. Again, that is sunset at Delaware.gov or you can use our public comment form that is on the committee's website as well. Um, Amanda and I thank you for joining us today and we look forward to hearing your comments. So we will get started. First up, I have Lloyd Schmitz followed by Aaron Mushrush. So Mr. Schmitz, you should be able to unmute yourself and offer your comment. Okay, thank you, Mark. Hello, Amanda. Uh, my name is Lloyd Schmitz, and I'd like to comment on the Pedestrian and Walkability Committee. It is my hope that this committee uh, continues. Well, I should say 
restarts because they haven't had a committee meeting in I believe over two years. So um, I, I think for uh, pedestrian safety, I happen to be a, a person with a visual impairment and uh, happen to be uh, totally blind. But I also serve on the Architectural Accessibility um, Board. And uh, I know that uh, people with disabilities, uh, whether it's visual or mobility, uh, are very concerned about their um, pedestrian safety. And pedestrian safety is not just sidewalks, it's intersections, it's alignment of uh, curb cuts, it's uh, pinch points, uh, the, the width of a sidewalk. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, determine the safety uh, of uh, mobility for pedestrians. And I, it is my belief that without a watchdog or a committee to uh, help guide the Department of Transportation that uh, uh, future administrations may not be as courteous and concerned about pedestrians as, the, as this administration and the previous administration. Uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, I, I have sent uh, my comments in writing also, and uh, we'll probably send some more as, as I get them. But uh, just to close out, um, walking is the states of Maryland's um, exercise So that's it, you know, maybe Delaware needs to make it our exercise and improve public health. <laughs> Thanks for your time, have a good day. Thank you so much, Mr. Schmitz. Uh, the next commenter uh, who signed up to speak is Aaron Mushrush. Hi, hello. Um, my name is Aaron Mushrush. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, comment on the Medical Marijuana Act Oversight Committee. Um, I am a brand new patient, actually. Uh, just started uh, June 24th of uh, this year. And uh, so far, um, I, I consider myself well-educated on the topic. Um, so I have enjoyed my experience. However, I know people in other states and what they have access to. Um, and so I really wanted to emphasize the edibles and the access to edibles. Um, and if the reason why I want to do that is because the first exposure I got to edibles was um, some, some pill caps and some dissolvable powder. Now those worked very well. And thank God I was, did not have any problems with opioid, but some people are turning to marijuana for as an alternative to the painkiller. So if they're gonna be exposed to white powder and pills all over again, I, I think that's kind of gonna lead to some troubles, maybe some triggers. Again, I don't, I'm not an expert on the subject, but just, I would like to see more edibles. And those edibles that are becoming available, um, they're selling out very quickly and they're also going to the older population. Um, I am a younger person. I'm 34. I have good, healthy lungs and stuff like that. So, you know, I can ingest in other ways. I would like to do the edibles, but also I don't want to be taking away from older people who, you know, may not be able to smoke and stuff like that. And so I would just really advise that we have more of an emphasis on the edibles um, and having more uh, pricing that's uh, competitive with other states with edibles. And finally, um, let's continue the education of marijuana. That's the most important thing is educating the current users and educating the youth of the dangers and the positives of marijuana. It is a very positive thing. However, like anything, if abused, it can be tricky. Thank you very much for your time and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, at this time, it looks like that is all of those in attendance that I see. Um, we did have uh, Jeanette Robinson, Lisa Rice, and Tony Trombecki sign up to speak. I do not see them in the attendees. 
uh, list. So if, um, if they are under a different name, um, if you could uh, raise your hand and I will recognize you at this time, um, we would like to open it up to any attendee who did not sign up to speak, but would like to. Uh, I believe I saw Leonard Allman raise his hand to speak. Sir, would you like to uh, offer a comment? Uh, yes, I would. Uh, my name is my name is Leonard Allman, and I'd like to talk about the medical marijuana. Uh, I've been using medical marijuana in Delaware now uh, since it became uh, legal through the medical through the medical format. Uh, my question to you is: Is why do we need to renew the license or the card every year? And why is there a fee for it? Uh, the fee used to be $150, and now it became $50. And then we still have to pay for the product that we ingest, uh, which is not covered by any drug plan or medical plan. So maybe we could uh, eliminate one of the fees. And uh, I, I think it's... Uh, it works for me. I'm almost 80 years old, and I have some chronic uh, pain issues uh, that it helps a great deal with. And that's my comments. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much for being here and uh, offering your comments to us. Uh, I will give a couple more seconds to see if there are any other folks who uh, wish to speak. That concludes the list of attendees who signed up to speak. Um, to reiterate a bit of what Amanda said earlier, um, you can find all information pertaining to the committee on the web, um, legis.delaware.gov slash committee slash sunset. Um, our email box is always open for any public comment, sunset at Delaware.gov. That's sunset at Delaware.gov. Um, thank you again for participating here today. Uh, we will be doing something similar tomorrow from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. And if you would like to speak, please register for that. Um, and you can also sign up for the committee's mailing list. Um, if you would like to be made aware of what the committee is, is, is doing, if you would like access to um, all of our work and research and reports, just send an email to sunset at Delaware.gov um, with join mail list in the body or the subject, whatever is easier for you, and we will get you added to that. Amanda, is there anything else you, uh, you wanted to say? Oh, thank you everyone for attending. I would just note that tomorrow's session does start at 5 p.m. So if you desire to uh, give us a comment um, to please join closer to the 5 p.m. Uh, because like today, if we don't have a whole lot of attendees wishing to comment, we'll be ending the session well before seven. So um, tomorrow at 5 p.m. we will be here and there's registration is open. And thank you so much for being here today. Thanks so much. Have a great day.